Hello all, welcome to Insights uh, IS Initiative. Think before you ink. So today's session, I will be covering 10 questions on uh, the same theme history. Tomorrow, I'll be starting with economy. So quickly, let's into get into these questions. These are largely UPSC 2022 and 2021 civil service exam questions. So the first question, according to Kautilya's Arthashastra, which of the following are correct? They have asked. One, a person who could be a slave as a result of judicial punishment. If a female slave bore her master a son, she was legally free. If a son born to the female slave was fathered by her master and the son was entitled to the legal status of the master's son. So all the three statements are correct. The answer is D, 1, 2 and 3. Friends, for these kind of questions, you will have to know specifically here trying to use any kind of logic will be always difficult in that regard and have seen over the years like history question what you have got. They were asking a lot of questions, themes such as important texts, important books and what are the important ideas in these books. So solve previous year question that will give you sufficient information. So answer for this question is D. So let's look into the next question. Which one of the following ancient towns uh, is well known for its elaborate water harvesting and management by building a series of dams and channelizing waters into connected reservoir? The answer for this question, again a factual question where you have to remember, it is Dholavira, which is in Gujarat. But you have other places called as Kali Bangan, which is famous for um, you know, pottery and uh, black bangles. Raki Giri, which comes in Haryana, which is the largest Harappan site. Here also you have found a seal with an alligator symbol in that regard. And Rupar is near Punjab. It is found on the banks of river Sutlej. So solve as many questions on IBC or um, the Vedic period. There itself you can do reverse engineering rather than reading a text and understanding everything. Try to solve through questions if you have listened to any class. Now let's go into the third question of the day. In the first quarter of the 17th century, which of the following factory or factories uh, uh, of the English East Indian Company has been located. They have asked where it is located. So here uh, the answer would be, they have given option Baroch. So it is one only. Because you have Chichole and uh, Trichinopoly. These are all uh, are not factories in that regard. These were minor uh, ports which is there. So the answer is what? A one only. So please also look into important factories established by the Dutch and you can also establish important factories by the Portuguese that will be important for the exam. So let's move on to the next question. According to the Portuguese writer Nunes, the women in Vijayanagar Empire were experts in which of the following areas? Wrestling, astrology, accounting and suiting. See friends, if you logically also look at these questions, right? So uh, we do know that women in Vijayanagar period were a bit empowered. So here uh, you cannot say they didn't know astrology, you cannot say they didn't know accounting in that regard. Logically go for all the three, all the four, one, two, three and four. So other basic information, the important travelers which came during Vijayanagar period, Ipan Batuta, he was from Morocco, he came during the times of Hariyaravan and you have Abdul Razak who was from Persia. He came during the period of Devaraya II. Then you have Conti from Italy. He also came during the period of Devaraya II. Then you have Domingo Pez, Nunes and Barbosa. All three are from Portugal. So these are the important travelers during the period of uh, uh, the Vijayanagar Empire. And Domingo Pez, he came during the period of Krishna Deva Raya. So these are the important. So solve more questions that you can uh, you know, easily remember things in history rather than trying to read it and approach it. Let's go into a modern history question now. Consider the following statements. Uh, first statement, Montague Chelford reforms, that is the Government of India Act 1919, recommended granting voting rights for all of the women above the age of 21. 100% you can say this statement is wrong because you know during British time, uh, there was no universal adult franchise and definitely for women, they would have not given all women voting rights. But it is true that in 1935 Act, that women... Um, uh, it gave uh, reserved seats for the women in uh, legislature. Yes, in 1935. See, voting rights for women was given in um, uh, 1919. But the legislature, reserved seats for women in legislature was given in 1935. So, answer is B. That is 2 only. But remember, voting rights for women was given in 1919. But not all women. With reference to Madana Palle of Andhra Pradesh, which of the following uh, is correct? Again, a factual question. If you only know specifically, please answer these questions, otherwise not. So, answer for this question is Rabindranath Tagore. He translated National Anthem from Bengali to English here. 
one of the tempting factor is that Pinga, Pingali uh, Venkaiya who designed the tricolor flag but there is no historical evidence to show that where he designed the national flag but it was in Madanapalle where Rabindranath Tagore translated. So, certain times logic can go wrong uh, if you go by the words. So, here the answer is C. So, let us move on to the next question. This is the match the following question. They can ask which of the following pairs are correctly matched etc. So, Burzoham rock cut shrines. Uh, Chandra Ketughar terracotta art, Ganeshwar copper artifacts. So, friends, the answer for this question again you have to know a bit of information. Burzohom, you find tools made of bones and stones. There was no element of rock cut shrines at that regard because it comes in a Neolithic period. So, this is what you can eliminate here. The answer is D, that is 2 and 3. Or in a new pattern, you can say 2 pairs are correct. Let us move on to the next question. Uh, they asked which of the following statements are correct. It was during the reign of Iltimis, Chengiz Khan uh, reached uh, Indus in pursuit of fugitive uh, Quarz, uh, the Khwarezm prince. This is correct. Second statement is wrong. It is because Taimur belonged to the period of 1398, whereas Muhammad bin Tughlaq was ruling between 1325 to 1351. So, this statement is uh, incorrect. It was during the reign of Devaraya II, the Vijayanagara emperor that Vasco da Gama reached. So, you can see Devaraya rule was from 1422 to 1446, whereas Vasco da Gama reached in 1498. So, this can't be correct. So, answer is A, one only. Friends, these kind of questions you have to know approximate dates. But again, I said these are rare questions in that regard. But nevertheless, have a vague idea that what are the important time periods in this history. Not all the time, the important uh, kingdoms were there. So, let us move into next question which is based on reference to ancient India. Uh, consider the following statement. Mitakshara was a civil law for the upper caste and uh, Dhyabhaga was a civil law for the lower caste. This is incorrect because it was applicable for to both upper caste as well as lower caste, both the laws in that regard. In Mitakshara system, the sons claim to right to property during lifetime of the father, whereas in Dhaibhaga system, it is only after death that sons can claim the right to property. This statement is uh, what you can say correct in that regard. And you can say Mitakshara deals with relative property by male uh, members only, whereas Dhaibhaga deals with matters related to property held by both male members. No, both uh, Mitakshara and Dhaibhaga, both were connected to uh, what you can say uh, male and females. But Mitakshara was bit uh, uh, not favoring the women in that regard, it favored the sons, whereas Dhyabhaga was more liberal in that regard. So, this statement is incorrect in that regard. So, the answer for this question will be B, that is 2 only. So, if you see the pattern of questions, what there was, they will ask a lot of questions on uh, text, literature, etc. These are the areas where questions have come. So, let us move on to the next question, the last question of the day. With reference to 8th August 1942 in Indian history, which one of the following statements is correct? Uh, statement A, Quit India Resolution was adopted by uh, All India AICC, uh, All India Congress uh, Committee. The Viceroy's Executive Council expanded to include more Indians. Congress ministries resigned in seven provinces. Cripps proposal uh, that an Indian Union was full dominion state. So, 8th August, you please remember, it is connected to Quit India Resolution. So, the answer for this question would be A. So, friends, these were the questions for today. Largely, we have covered history questions. From tomorrow, I will be uh, bringing out new themes in that regard. So, in the new thematics, I will be uh, uh, covering economy based questions. For the next three days, I will be largely covering economy based questions from CDS, CPF, and civil services. So, for the tip of today, what I would always suggest is that. So, with respect to uh, CSAT in that regard, one thing what you have to keep in mind. So, first identify what is your area of strength like comprehension or aptitude, try to solve those questions first. Do not try to invest in time in solving linearly all 80 questions. First identify those questions, your strength areas, try to solve them one, take 5 minutes extra for it so that you do not, you get those questions correct. Because do not waste on your time on those areas, we are weak, we are not getting entangled. Because what will happen with some students, when they try to solve a mathematics based question, if they are not able to get the answer in 5 minutes, they get entangled there, they might waste, take 7 minutes or 8 minutes. So, be conscious of the time in CSAT, that is very, very essential. So, with this, we will meet tomorrow with economy themed question. Till then, take care.